Okay, I started my recording. Hello, everybody. Uh, today we will talk about conjugate gradients, or maybe I will show for for a second the title of our lesson. And uh, so we start with the quiz as usually. So two questions. It's uh, questions uh, from my list uh, towards exams. So uh, first, uh, motivate expanding man manifold property. Just explain why why it is so. Uh, and the, and by expanding manifold property, we have that uh, new gradient because you get this optimization in subspace uh, should be orthogonal to subspace of uh, all previous direction also explains this and uh, raise your hand whenever you are ready i will stop recording okay i see that everybody is ready you can put down your hands and uh, Uh, okay, and uh, the topic? Have you uh, pressed the recording? Yes, yes, thank you for reminding me. I think I already did it. Yes, yes, my recording is working. And uh, Priel, you can put your hand down. Uh, okay, to, uh, today conjugate gradient, it's... Uh, very important one of one of the central algorithms in optimization uh, uh, a little bit challenging uh, technically but uh, i think we, we will go through uh, uh, the 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 main claim if a condition number is large that uh, then uh, linear uh, linear convergence rate of gradient descent is like one or we thought maybe here is four lambda min divided by lambda max and here is this condition number uh it's a ratio under square root which makes a method uh, converge much faster and for small problems it's even practical just to do n iterations and it will stop for uh, exact arithmetic for inexact several times by, by n but this property is one of central the, there are more properties more important properties of convergence which we don't uh, learn here but i strongly recommend you if you are ever interested in conjugate gradient to go to this book of nocidal and right for example and see as a nice properties, very nice properties of convergence of conjugate gradients. Okay. Yeah, question? Yes. Uh, is the uh, conjugate gradient method uh, assumes uh, that f of x is a quadratic? Okay, thank you for a good question. Uh, when we develop the method, and uh, quite often in applications, it's uh, used for quadratic functions, but uh, also it may work uh, rather well for non-quadratic functions uh, with line search, uh, meaning that in the area of minimum, the functions are close to quadratic, despite that for no non-quadratic function, we will learn quasi newton bfgs and limited memory bfgs that are often more recommended but also conjugate gradient may be checked all uh, main derivation in in this lecture is, is going for quadratic functions and many practical ap applications are for quadratic functions because uh, there is a also line search which in quadratic cases analytical it seems uh, very uh, sensitive to 
to the direction if it's not uh, exactly correct quadratic quadratic uh, we will discuss it later the directions the formula like Pollock Rivier it happens to be rather relatively robust to uh, to inaccuracies in direction compensation okay, in, in the for, for comparison yes uh, what is the convergence rate uh, of a quadratic uh, f of x for god in descent how many steps also uh, uh just a second what what did, did you ask uh, coordinate the descent i i'm the, the gradient descent Gradient the same here. Here is a convergence rate. Maybe also for more. quadratic. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you see, it's highly recommended. By the way, uh, minimize quadratic function is the, the same as solve systems of linear equations. So and uh, conjugate gradient is rather popular and e efficient. For very large systems of linear equations, especially when multiplication by matrix is sparse, when you have uh, is fast, when you have sparse matrices or matrices like some fast transform, like wavelet transform or fast Fourier transform, and so on and so on. Okay. And uh, in tomography, for example, there are also so called forward and back projection operations which may be done relatively fast and conjugate gradient is one of the methods okay and uh, to develop method we come really to basics what is uh, scalar or inner product in general because uh, after that we will use it spe special case in conjugate gradient so it uh, defined by those four properties conjugate symmetric distributive linear uh, with respect to scalar uh, and uh, positive definite uh, and uh, except of uh, usual inner product in euclidean spaces or in uh, complex spaces that we know that there are inner products in other spaces in spaces of continuous functions for example or this last one uh, we called it q q linear q inner product it's x transpose q y and this will be used in uh, derivation of conjugate direction and uh, i think immediately it's good for us to start ah, ah and uh, of course uh, gram schmidt orthogonalization we start with just system of linearly independent vectors and by gram schmidt orthogonalization we just subtract from a uh, current vector it projection to subspace of previous ve vectors and this difference is orthogonal which is given by this formula and now uh, to get used to it we will start with uh, an exercise uh, like we told uh, for two functions uh, we can define inner product uh, on interval for example from minus one to one when t argument it's like an integral of product of those two functions it should be a complex conjugate if we are with complex functions, but with real functions, this is the formula. So we can look on functions on interval as uh, vectors in the Hilbert space. And uh, uh, let's take those four functions. Actually, I thought uh, usually we do four, but let's save time. Uh, three functions, constant, uh f of t is equal to t and f of t is equal to t squared and let uh, apply gram schmidt orthogonalization to get uh, three orthogonal vectors in Hilbert space and this is our 
first x plus x itself. Just take three of them without or the t cube. And I will pause recording. Oops. Uh, okay, I, I think Priel was first. Would you like to show us? Yes. I can stop my share. Okay. Uh, so, maybe your your internet is slow. Uh, uh, did, did anybody see the the screen of Priel? We we will wait for a second, and if not, maybe somebody else will show. Okay. No. No. We we see. Yes, we see. I see. Okay. Please. Okay, um, I'm not uh, succeed with the laser, so I will do it with uh, this. Uh, okay, so we start with uh, y equals one. Mm -hmm. um, then we do x minus the uh, projection of x on a uh, one uh, divided by uh, these expressions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's uh, the inner product of one with one. Okay, so x and one will resolve in a f in a zero mm -hmm. because it's the integral. And uh, so we so got we, we we conclude that first two functions are already orthogonal. Yes, they have zero inner product. Yes. Okay. Okay. Second term. So we got the uh, x squared. Uh, we subtract from it the uh, projection on every uh, previous uh, on every previous uh, uh, function. So we got x squared and x. So it will be uh, x cubed from uh, uh, divided by three from uh, minus one to one. Mm -hmm. So that will be uh, zero. Okay, and uh, uh, here we got x uh, squared and one, so it will be x cubed uh, divided by three from minus one to one. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it will be this, uh, uh, wait. Just no, a second, uh, x squared with x, uh, should be uh, integral of x cubed is x to the power four, yes. Yes. In the first one, here x cubed, yes. So here it's a uh, two thirds, so divided by uh, by this expression, we got that this is a two, okay, the length of the interval. Uh, so all of this is a, uh, Two divided by six, so uh, overall we got uh, x squared, uh, minus uh, seven. Okay. That's okay. The... And uh, you, you also did for cubic function. I hope that uh, you did it uh, right, d despite that I didn't uh, require. Hopefully the result is uh, correct. D uh, did anybody? Uh, uh, does everybody agree? I I want other participants to, to check. Yes. Okay. 
On basis of usual polynomials, we can get system of orth orthogonal functions, and it's uh, very useful. It's very useful if you uh, want to uh, obtain uh, decomposition of any arbitrary function by polynomial, best fitting polynomial, yes? You just compute the uh, scalar product with those functions and normalize properly, and that's all. So this approach is very useful. Okay, let me get back to my slides. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Gram Schmidt orthogonalization. Is there a yes nice uh, connection to the Taylor expansion? See, uh, you, you, it's, uh, Sorry, it, I, um, I see it, but uh, yeah, uh, is, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's nice qu qu question because if I have an arbitrary function and I want to uh, approximate it with a polynomial of limited de degree, I have two ways to, to go or to, uh, to compute. Taylor expansion and uh, restricted, uh, truncated, yes, by se several terms. But you should know that in this way, I, I will get very good uh, approximation in the neighborhood of uh, my expansion. But if I am interested to get good approximation on some interval, it's different problem. And uh, decomposing uh, by orthogonal polynomials will get better solution. And uh, sometimes there are optimization methods which try to explore this this direction as well. Thank you. It's good. It's good remark. Okay. And now we use this uh, co uh, concept in q conjugate uh, building q conjugate the de de direction where whenever we want to minimize the quadratic function i forgot to write it so i will write it here maybe I'm not... oh okay I, I will write it on next slide so we de define inner product in this way when Q is symmetric positive definite matrix and get the, the same procedure if I have a number of directions. It's uh, uh, linearly independent. And from them, I get Q set of Q orthogonal. So it's, uh, I hope it's clear. Any question here? Okay, let's continue. And now this is uh, one of most central slides. So if I have a function, a quadratic function of x, and uh, if I say that my x is some uh, current point x naught plus some d d displacement s, so my function uh, looks in this way. If I have set of q orthogonal directions then my objective function can be written in this so if if s is de decomposed and alpha are decomposition co coefficients by those directions then my objective function become uh, so-called separable in alpha it's sum of terms and each term uh, depends on only on its own alpha. There, there is no intermix be between alpha. He, here, this function, this original function, is not separable because if you open this quadratic function, you will get all kinds of products between xi and xj. And this function of alpha is separable. 
you have sum of terms and each term depends only on its own alpha. So it's uh, written in this general form and uh, it's very easy to minimize it in alpha. You do independent optimization. And here maybe if you, if you have a question here, it would be nice to ask. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, why uh, in the second row, why is it uh, equal? The f of x0 plus s? Uh, okay. You can develop it straightforward. You can substitute you can substitute here x, uh, x0 plus s but also i am clever i know that i i can use a taylor expansion uh, around point x naught yes if i know gradient and hessian of my quadratic function yes this is taylor expansion it's uh, like i i am saving my mental work you can just substitute the direct and that's all. But uh, Taylor expansion, we, we, we know that it's a value plus gradient transpose by displacement plus a quadratic form of question. I have a question too. Uh, this uh, equal disequality is only if uh, f is uh, quadratic, right? Because uh, then the Taylor expansion will be the function itself. But if f is not quadratic, so it's a approximation. Yes, you're, you're right. But here we start with f quadratic. All, all our development here is for, for quadratic function. You see, f is quadratic. So it's Taylor expansion is accurate. I, I saved mental work. You you could directly substitute here and get the, the same formula. Just substitute what what is gradient? Yes, it's qx plus b. Yes, gradient of this. I just saved some writing. Okay. So uh, I have another question. Yes. Um, I see here is that. Uh... We used only uh, the gradient at point uh, x naught. Yes. Uh, and and then uh, we took uh, like n uh, other directions. Just a second. Uh, what is x not here? It's current point. It's not uh, original origin. Uh, just a second. Just yeah. second. Just a second. Just a second. Let me think. Uh, actually, we can consider no, no, no. X naught is a. Uh, uh, let's think. Let X naught be starting point of entire process in in entire all all algorithm. So it's a gradient at this starting point, and Hessian is constant. So did did, did I answer or you want to? Um, okay. Yes. So. Uh... The Q orthogonal directions are just uh, uh, maybe are they related to some gradients, future future gradients? So just ah, you you going uh, forward. We we uh, at this point uh, when we say about method of conjugate directions, it's more general at this point. It uh, doesn't require those directions uh, to be. Uh, related to gradients it just say assume that we have a set of such q conjugate direction somebody gave it to us so we can, uh, we can do use... minimization in very simple way so we can also use the trivial uh, directions we, we, which one i didn't hear the standard the standard the directions like one uh, uh like the vector of uh, one zero 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 ah, zero uh... one so the yeah you can you could start with them but you want your directions d to be q orthogonal you would you you can oh, start the standard uh, basis apply grand schmidt procedure get your directions d and uh, go and use them this you could, could do 
Okay. It would not yield the best algorithm in other relations, but it will converge in n steps if if your arithmetic is uh, accurate. But it will lose uh, other very nice properties of conjugate gradient, this rate of convergence uh, that we had. So, but for understanding, it's uh, good. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's continue. And now we are with your question. So if if we minimize in set of direction, if you used only uh, limited number of terms, then we optimized in subspace spanned by just several of those directions, not not all. So after n step, n steps we optimize in a span of uh, n first the directions, and that's why our gradient should be after this minimization should be orthogonal to this affine subspace. Uh, do, I, do I have, I don't have here picture and usually I do draw some picture at this point and let me put it just directly here. So I have uh, this subspace uh, and I called it MK. And I know that uh, at xk, I get to the minimum. Okay? So uh, if I uh, go in any direction in this subspace, uh, xk would be minimizer in any direction. So the function will look like this. So uh, directional der derivative in any direction would be would be zero so uh, it, it's it means that my vector of gradient uh, gk uh, will be orthogonal to any direction i don't know r to any direction r in this uh, subspace mk uh, so if a vector uh, is orthogonal to any vector in uh, affine subspace. So it, it's the same like to say it's orthogonal to su uh, subspace itself. It's like the residual gradient. It's not a residual gradient. It's just gradient of our objective function. It's, uh, it's just nabla. Uh, uh, XK. This, this is the the nicest and most central property of method of conjugate direction that we use. Yeah, maybe it's good if anybody else may ask a question here it might help to everybody uh, uh, as i understand the uh, the gradient is uh, uh, orthogonal to the subspace because uh, if it wasn't it means that our xk isn't really minimal because the gradient tells us to move a little bit in the subspace yes but uh, i didn't understand how i show it uh, mathematically so uh uh so if you if you have a minimum in direction r then uh, uh f prime in direction r at point xk at point xk uh, we learn that uh, it's inner product of uh, gradient with uh, direction this was a second lecture of our course when we learned uh, derivatives and and so this should be zero yes so it's uh, has zero inner product with uh, every vector in subspace 
this is mathematical derivation. Okay, thank you. Uh, you so can it's, do it's supposed to snapshot uh, as as otherwise I will uh, remove. Yes, yes, yes. W what was the question? Uh, so what is the motivation of uh, using this property? Is it supposed now uh, that we know uh, this this property, uh, we can make it uh, faster than uh, any iterations? So uh, after after every it uh, it. The iteration new gradient will be orthogonal to subspace of all uh, all uh, previous directions. See, this is very important, yes, be because if it orthogonal to subspace which is spanned by those directions, all those ve vectors are also in subspace. So new gradient will be orthogonal to all and orthogonal in usual sense. Pay attention. Not not Q orthogonal, but just orthogonal in Euclidean sense. And this will be used in uh, derivation conjugate gradient. Okay. Then I maybe I will save this slide. And uh, clear. Okay. May, may, may I remo remove all drawings? Okay. Just say me yes, and I will click and remove all of this. Okay, I remove them. Stop annotating. Uh, and now we we are, we are ready to develop me method of conjugate gradient. So what uh, the method of conjugate gradient says that we minimize the same uh, quadratic function. And our directions we built on the basis of gradients in our current point. So we are in starting point and take G node as a first direction, gradient at this at the starting point. Then we ad advance to the next point in this direction with the exact line search. And then we apply a gram schmidt procedure to get uh, from this new gradient. Actually, what do we do? We obtain new Q orthogonal direction from this new gradient. And previous uh, directions, which were already Q orthogonal. And that's basically all. And then there, there will be simplifications that uh, we will not need to uh, compute all the sum, but uh, get a really simple formula. Can you give a motivation for using the the Q, the Hessian? Uh, you, be, because we, we, we want to get Q conjugate directions, yes? And we have a Q inner product. And uh, let me get two slides back. And the, uh, it says, assume we, we, we have this uh, just linearly independent directions. In, in our case, it's gradient in our current points, yes? And we want from them to get set of Q orthogonal directions. Why we are interested? Because optimization is really simple. Yes, optimization is separable. Doing line search one dimensional in every queue, you solve the problem. And here, what is written is Gramsci procedure. It's, it's a shorter way to the procedure. Middle. Just a second, which you already used. Yes, this is Gramsci procedure. Yes, which you tried with the example on functions. Yes, and here the same Gramsci procedure when inner product. It's P transpose QD. And that's all. That's all. And yeah, yes, what was the question? So it provides a, a faster way to the, the faster direction to the minimum? Yeah, yes, because it, when you know those, those uh, Q orthogonal directions, then uh, your all optimization is 
minimization of one dimensional functions you do and by the way if, if your entire function is quadratic your one dimensional cross sections are also quadratic functions very simple expressions of alpha and you get an analytically those minima and the, uh, that's uh, basically all and uh, we get back to conjugate gradient so we, we have this gram schmidt procedure just written once once again and then then we say that because we already showed that new gradient yes because of expanding my manifold property new gradient is uh, orthogonal to all previous directions d but they span the same space that uh, gradients so new gradient is orthogonal to all previous gradients we, we can show and some other simple manipulations uh, what uh, it's technicality the the, the main thing is is here yeah uh, every everything cancels and we get uh, to conclusion that all, the only last term in the sum will be non-zero all other terms will be zero As the, and the formula become uh, really simple just a second i should do something with my with my viewer yeah to see the entire and, and and then we get two equivalent formula uh Pollock Rieber and uh Fletcher Reeves why they are equivalent because they include the term new gradient transpose previous gradient which we also know that it is zero but it happens that when you minimize not quadratic function then this term is not exactly zero and it helps somehow to st stabilize the method we don't dive here in this delicate developments if anybody is interested he is in, invited again uh, no 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 and right is the, the best uh, reference for discussion of, the, of this uh, thing and i see that tomer raised his hand uh, yes i have uh, two questions yes uh, one, we always uh, do this method uh, n times, exactly. Thank you for a very good question. Uh, you do it n times exactly if you have rather small problem. Rather small problem. I don't know, roughly speaking, 10 variables or several tens of variables. Even in that case, you may discover that because of uh, inexact arithmetic you may need uh, more than 10 times but uh, be, be, before we go to your question let's summarize because this uh, summary slide and uh, i already told to somebody of uh, of you that you you can use this slide it, it will be provided in in the in, in exam if uh, there will be question related to conjugate gradient it's very nice summary of, of everything on the left it's ge general description of the method and uh, on the right uh, some particular details for quadratic function so the question was do we need uh, exactly n steps if for example uh, we have a huge problem with x is a million dimensional vectors which is easily happening in image processing problems mm -hmm. maybe even more than million then you don't want to do million steps and instead you know that you have a not bad convergence rate when uh, i can write it here again like uh, one minus square root of uh, lambda mean 
lambda max. So uh, and uh, quite quite uh, quite often it says that uh, you you may instead of million steps you may rather well uh, converge in fifty steps or in hundred steps. Depends on your problem and also preconditioning, which we will touch later. Later, may increase. But uh, those fifty steps, you will uh, choose the highest uh, eigenvalues vectors. No, no, you, you uh, the the thing is that you don't know a eigenvalues. You just from general perspective or from a empirical behavior, you may assume that uh, though this uh, ratio is not not very terrible and uh, get a reasonable accuracy quite often you don't decide in uh, in advance you you may decrease until uh, norm of gradient will become very small or if you know that your minimum of objective function should be very close to zero for example <clears throat> then uh, you will stop depending how close to zero you are based uh, based on this in this ratio, you say it's terrible when uh, min and max are far from each other or close? Uh, far. If, if they are close, then uh, uh, then you get the uh, phi convergence uh, rate close to zero. Then it means that your discrepancy will be multiplied, yes? Your discrepancy f uh, my f k minus uh, f star it's c uh, multiply and say k plus plus one yes c multiplied by f k minus f star. So if C is close to zero, it says that your discrepancy is decreasing very fast. It's a very good situation. Okay, thank you. And uh, you said it's also good for non-quadratic functions, but most of our uh, mess was depending on uh, Q, which is the very big part of the quadratic function. Uh, uh, okay, it's it's good question. Let me remove this uh, part. Okay, my drawings. If your function is general, you don't know anything about your Hessian. What you do, what you do, you you are staying in a starting point. You compute gradient, yes. And uh, you do line search. You cannot do exact line search. You do accurate line search with polynomial approximation, for example. And you compute gradient and new 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 point. And you compute your direction based on new gradient and previous direction with this simple formula. And you don't know anything about Q. You only compute functions. Yes, the gradient formula, we started it from Q and it became so simple because of the Q uh, properties. Yes, but think, uh, okay, okay. let's let, let, uh, get back to, it's, uh, we, we jumped a little, a little bit. Let's let, uh, look on right part of this slide. So he, here on the left is gen, uh, general scheme. If you know Q, if you have qu uh, quadratic function, yes? Then you compute gradient minus gradient, yes? It's Q X naught plus B in, with minus. Ah, something wrong. Uh, could be minus B, plus and minus here. So. Yes? Uh, what should we do? G Q gradient V Q plus B. Okay, let let's say that we should correct a little bit. Uh, 
we should correct a little bit and uh, here should be plus yes to be consistent okay so you computed gradient and do line search it by the way line search you do you can do analytically and uh, compute gradient in new new point Every, everywhere you only need uh, to multiply q with some axis and this is uh, only one multiplication or q with some d we, we even showed that you 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 don't need multiply q by both by x and by d it's enough by, by one of them <laughs> taking into account that d is Dif different between previous x and next x. So you 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 never use uh, the matrix Q explicitly instead, uh, except that in qu quadratic case you mul multiply by Q. And Q may be some special matrix, maybe sparse matrix, which you may have a fast uh, multiplication. <laughs> And I, I have a question. Yes. Yes, yes. So uh, we canceled the DK transpose the GK plus one, uh, but we say that uh, GK plus one transpose uh, uh, times GK is a zero only for a, a quadratic function. Mm -hmm. So uh, for quadratic function, um, both of them are uh, zero, but for non-quadratic function, so only the DK transpose uh, GK plus one is zero? Uh, for non-quadratic function, all, all these der derivation become uh, very approximate. And uh, from an empirical point of view, and maybe there are some uh, theory, theoretical motivations, but I am not so advanced in this area. I know that uh, empirically, this uh, update became, behaves better. Okay. This is the only thing I can say for non-quadratic case. Okay. Uh, can I have a question? Can, yes. Can you please repeat the uh, the statement uh, why uh, there is a, a remark uh, do not uh, need extra multiplication Q, K, Q, X, K plus a half? Uh, because uh, because uh, I may write it somewhere here D uh you 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 see uh xk plus a ha plus one is xk plus gamma dk yes so uh if you you if you have this product yes then uh to have q by x plus you ah, ah it's it's actually written here let me remove drawings it's written here <laughs> sorry assume that you already have q qxk you 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 only uh, compute q by x naught which you in any case have to compute yes if you have qxk and you already have q multiplied by dk, this is the expression for q multiplied by x plus k plus one. Oh, it's okay. Isn't it uh, trivial? Mm -hmm. What? Isn't it trivial? Oh, why? Uh... It's it's trivial, but uh, I pay your attention that you in updates you have both. Yes, you have q uh, q by x. Yes, and Q by D, and the claim is uh, trivial. Okay. It's, it's trivial. I agree with you. Just one should pay attention. Then he has uh, he has to use only one matrix vector multiplication. 
because in quadratic case, this is the most expensive operation, yes? It's uh, like uh, n squared or number of elements in mat matrix Q. All, all other uh, all other products like uh, G transpose D, it's only n, n operations. They are very cheap, yes? This and this are two most expensive uh, operations. Uh, but one is uh, related to others, so you need uh, only one of them. Okay, Conclusion so... that you need only one matrix vector multiplication of uh, every iteration. That means that in practice, uh, after we calculate uh, QDK, uh, there is no need to calculate over it again? Uh, no, no. One of them you should calculate. Assume that you de decided that you will calculate Q, uh, Q D, DK for every new D, then you don't need to calculate Q, X, K or Q, X, K plus one. You only calculate Q, D, K. Only one. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe maybe you... it's a good time for, for break. Uh, or let, let's finish with this slide and then we um, break. In the previous slide, Okay, just uh, so I, I will clear drawings. And, uh, just a second. This one? Uh, no, the previous one. Yes, I didn't understand the the transition, the term in uh, A, the last term in A. Okay. The, uh, yeah, this one is said that Q, Q we, we have those terms, Q multiplied by G, yes? And uh, we remember that gradients are Q, Q uh, gradient at some iteration, it's Q by X at this iteration plus constant B, yes? If you are interested in Q by differences of axes, it will be exactly differences of gradients because of formula for gradient. Oh, okay. Okay. Because of this for, formula only for uh, XK, yes. Okay, okay, okay. then uh, let's have 10 minute break and return after break. I will stop. Pause recording. Okay, I uh, okay, I am with you. I've reviewed the, again the uh, uh, what you said in the summary about the multiplying, saving the multiplication. Yes. Yes. Uh, if I multiply Q with the X K and Q with D K, it's two multiplications. Yes. So why shouldn't I uh, multiply Q with XK plus one? So, yeah. And uh, this, what we say, it's enough to multiply Q with uh, each, with DK for every K. And then Q for X, every new X, if, if you, uh, keep your products of Q with X, yes, from previous iteration. Then Q with new X is just Q with old X, which you already store, plus this product, which you already also compute. When did I compute these uh, products? Okay, for every iteration, you compute this product because you use it yeah. so in, in other places. Yes. This product you compute. So it's one matrix vector multiplication, Q by DK for every K. And Q by XK you get for, for free. Ah, from a uh, GK? Yes. U multiplied by XK plus one. It's like GK, no, no, uh, GK no, no. minus ah, B. It's, uh, sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, 
it's used here, but why this formula is right because of this. Xk plus one, X, Xk plus gamma multiplied by dk. It's what you get in your line search, yes? Yes. So then q is... multiplied by xk plus one is q multiply q by right hand side of this expression. Ah, oh, okay. 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 Sorry, <laughs> I, I did some mess. Okay. okay, thank you. And uh, now we only need to talk a little bit about preconditioning. So this is the uh, other version of convergence rate where kappa is uh, lambda max by lambda mu. This is kappa. It's not k. It's my writing. It would be different. Uh, okay. So how can we improve condition number? We say that we can change variables. Instead of minimizing uh, in X, we <laughs> can say that X is S from matrix S multiplied by Y. So F me X is F me S Y. And uh, corresponding Hessian will, gradient and Hessian will also change. <clears throat> and we get opportunity instead of using our original Hessian Use this Hessian multiplied by S from two sides, S from two sides. And we, if we are experienced and or lucky, uh, in, in many cases, we can know what is good matrix S to improve condition number, to improve ratio between uh, maximum and minimum uh, eigenvalue. And uh, just a second. And we will discuss la later particular ca cases. For, for example, if a uh, Hessian would be just diagonal, yes, you, you want to make it identity. So you should pre multiply by one over uh, square root of this matrix, yes. We, we, we will get to, to this. But assume that we know S, then uh, we we can uh, in 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 Y it's uh, we start with gradient the descent in Y you you will go to previous iteration plus uh, step size multiplied by gradient with respect to Y it's here yes the same but. Uh, one can say I I don't want to use Y at 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 all. I want to get back to my iteration in X. Uh, how w one can do it? Just uh, multiply this expression by S from from the left. Yes, S Y K plus one is X K plus one. So you get this simple expression, and you see that S S transpose that we will call as uh, w will pre multiply gradient and similar wo work one can do with conjugate gradient and get expression for entire process in terms of this matrix w and have only x's and you don't have y at all on this right hand side any any question here it's a little bit technical you just should watch carefully the lecture once more. I have a general question uh, of everything we see until now. Uh, if we have a non-quadratic function, so you, when you say we can do it for it too, we just take the Taylor expansion of it and do the same process for the Taylor expansion of the non-quadratic function? Just a second. Uh, we are going with second iteration. Uh, you... uh, okay, let's jump this is actually tutorial we, we have right to jump if i have non-quadratic function let's get back this summary slide then you forget about this right hand side of this slide and you think about left hand side pay attention that you don't have any 
they will have nothing, nothing, no Taylor expansion, nothing. You here you have only calculations of function, gradient, and uh, one dimensional line search. <clears throat> Okay, but but not, why not to do it with the Taylor expansion? It wouldn't be good the result. Taylor expansion is just uh, using this huge uh, matrix Q, which you <laughs> don't know and don't want to think about it. It's much easier to evaluate function and gradient than evaluate its uh, quadratic re uh, representation. You don't want the the goal of conjugate gradient. If you can avoid working with matrices, just don't don't do it. Don't work with matrices. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, please. Uh, and if uh, the function is unknown, so uh, I do just I just do inexact line search, or or is it, uh, or should I choose another method? Uh, we assume that your function is a black box. You don't know its algebraic structure, but given x, if you put x on input, the output you will get function value. But also, you can get gradient of this function. And, and we have in this uh, uh, video on uh, Jacobians that uh, actually very important thing if, if you know to cal calculate function calculating gradient is uh, about the same computational work up to multiplier mm -hmm. of two or three so you assume that you know only function and gradient and how do you do line search with uh, polynomial uh, interpolation we already learned line search method with polynomial inter with cubic interpolation and safeguard, for example, and you use this method. You don't need to have uh, access to analytical structure of your function in general. But in but, quadratic case, it's good to use if, if you know that your function is quadratic. Yes. When do I decide if uh, I should use the uh, polynomial approximation or the inexact uh, line search? say from uh, uh, using the the backtracking uh, usually uh, backtracking if you use uh, newton method for example or gradient descent backtracking may be enough for quasi newton despite that in homework we required only backtracking and only checking wolf condition Actually, in good implementations, even of quasi-Newton, people already use polynomial interpolation. And uh, in conjugate gradient, usually also uh, people use, because here your line search should be relatively accurate. So here you should use polynomial cubic or quadratic interpolation, usually. It shouldn't be uh, shouldn't it be exactly accurate because I rely on the on the fact that I have, uh, I have uh, optimized the direction my efforts in yes. each direction yes uh, I just refer you to literature to books how it should it it cannot be exactly accurate for if you have non non quadratic function. How accurate? What is the stopping criteria in your line search? Okay, I just send you to literature, to to the excellent book of Nosidal and Wright. This is the first reference, and I think it is available also in internet PDF. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Please. And now we get back to preconditioning. So if you have uh, preconditioning, if, if you have this change of variables, x is equal uh, s y, actually you can get back to x's and uh, write explicitly the whole process only in x's, forgetting about y. <laughs> and there you will have this matrix W, which is s s transform, transpose everywhere. And uh, the only thing 
what would be practical a recommendation to get this uh, metrics? Uh, uh, yes, and for, for this, we will have small exercise. Yeah, yes, what, what is the question, please? Uh, the line that uh, of the, uh, uh, the left one, so dy on k plus one. He, he, no, uh, two lines uh, later. Here. Yes. So yeah. um, reg regularly, what, what we did until now in conjugate gradients in the summary slide, mm -hmm. we say that uh, dy of k plus one equals a minus the gradient in k plus one, not in uh, k. And then we need to uh, collect all the... Yeah. I think yeah, I have a mistake here. Thank you very much. I think I should put here. I should put here k plus one. You say yes. Yes. K plus one. Thank you very much. Right I have the same. I I should somehow repair in my original slide. I think uh, k uh, k plus one here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, and uh, of course here, yes, k plus one. Okay, yes, you're right. Okay, and then we may do a small exercise. Uh, any case, I should clear my draw drawings with my tools I use now, and we can go to small exercise. Uh, Yeah, the the claim if if is uh, my matrix Q is diagonally dominated as extreme example here yes you have some values on diagonal but they are not e e e equal so eigenvalues of this matrix are rather d different and so, some small values of uh, of the diagonal. Then a good setting for preconditioning metrics is just uh, use this in the power minus one half because you twice you multiply twice by the <laughs> minus square root and you get something very close to identity matrix. Uh, in previous year we did this uh, example manually, but to save time, I, I invite you just. If if you have a MATLAB or Python, just uh, take this matrix and take this preconditioning and say what uh, what are eigenvalues of original matrix and what are eigenvalues of this uh, matrix R after preconditioning. So let, let's do this. Numerically, this exercise is really fast. Yes, here is the an approximation. Or should we ah the diag? Okay. Yeah, yes. Uh, here is the explicit formula for for S. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, but I uh, it's still not. I forgot. Oh, okay, so then you. Just a second. Okay. Um. So. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Define the Q. Mm -hmm. With a. Uh, as uh, written, one hundred one one and uh, alba e alba. The quantity s the other. Uh, 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 the Alexson shall Q. Uh, in a shortage, be minus one. Yes. Yeah. I, I guess your 
you are tired towards the end of the day and I will help you with translation too. Ah. When I am tired, tired also, my foreign language is go away. <laughs> uh, so, okay, 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 okay. So okay. I will, I will uh, repeat it in English. So uh, I took the uh, diagonal of Q, took the square root and the inverse of the diagonal matrix, mm -hmm. and uh, put it again in the form of a, a, of a diagonal uh, matrix. Mm -hmm. Uh, I calculated R equals uh, S transpose ti mm -hmm. times uh, Q times S, and I calculated, calculated the eigenvalues of R, mm -hmm. and then the eigenvalues of Q. Yes. Uh, you can see the, the differences. Mm -hmm. um, I took, a, a, I put the eigenvalues of Q in the variable Q, and calculated the the kappa, q mean over okay. Q mass. So it's 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 enough. We we we, we can do it by uh, by hand already. I, yeah. Important that condition number of uh, one of them is, is uh, almost zero. Is uh, like uh, uh, zero zero. It's uh, one thousand one one. 10 to the minus 3 approximately and the, yeah. the, the, the other one very close to 1. one. Yes. And if one will program uh, any uh, even gradient descent, it will convince extremely fast. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any 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 question, any comment? I, for, I forgot uh, always to ask before we... <laughs> Okay, so with this we more or less finished, and uh, as usually, uh, if you have uh, now, if if you need uh, any free free conversation, uh, any 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 question, it's like a reception hour. Do do we have any questions? Uh, even uh, regarding homework. Uh, by the, by the way, any 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 anything? Now it's still on. It's still on uh, record. And if you think your question may be of uh, general interest, let's keep it on record, and then we'll stop the the. Way. Okay. Well, uh, any any question? I have a regarding the homework three. Okay, uh, this is our future, future work. Is it published? Uh, and then we will, uh, we can stop, uh, because Priel is a vo volunteer who is preparing with me the next homework. <laughs> okay, then we can stop, uh, stop uh, recording. Pause. So the question about new, new neural networks. Yeah, I heard you uh, mention again. Ju the just a second. Maybe I will get back to my slides. Yes. You would like me to go to slides? And uh, 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 what it, uh, just a second, just directly. Uh, uh, wh what uh, are you talking about? Uh, I just uh, wanted to, to be sure. Uh, in what context were you mentioning in your networks? Is it uh, something that we should have uh, watched or something that we need to watch for next? Uh, okay. Okay. So it's because uh, I haven't watched it. So it's uh, for next. Uh, uh, first of all, you had to, to watch uh, Jacobian because uh, Jacobian is used in uh, Gauss New Newton, at least beginning of Jacobian. But neural network explicitly it for next for homework three. For homework three you you will need it. But I, I, I invite if you feel that you have time I invite you to watch it. It's a little bit lo loaded. Yeah. And uh, of course ev everybody I, I invite you to watch it if you if you have time now it's good 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 idea to
to watch uh, all this. Uh, uh, oh. Sorry. Uh, it's good. It's good idea to watch. Uh, let uh, one second. Jacobian gradient, uh, Jacobian of graphs, and the gradient of neural network in matrix form. The, the oh, okay. So I need to, to, to video, this. but there, there is also in the beginning general twenty minutes introduction to new neural networks. It's good to watch it uh, as well because it gives you general understanding of what is going on there. Okay, because uh, I personally am not familiar with the uh, neural networks. Uh, the, then the, the first 20 minute video on new, new neural network, it's a very good introdu introduction from, from those who start from scratch. Uh, so uh, can I please uh, share my screen? Just a second, uh, okay, yeah, please. So you talk about this uh, video introduction to neural networks. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And the Jacobian that I should watch. And for next class, uh, we should uh, watch uh, lecture twelve or in the course. Uh, just a second. It's uh, on quasi Newton. Yes. Uh, uh, the the, the next week. Uh, J oh. J just a second. Everything in this week. This okay. is uh, week seven. Uh, lectures from week seven. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you.